Hi, it's Stephen for Bland Designs, and I want to show you something that I came upon uh, in a very um, um, unexpected way. I decided that I wanted to do some paper marbling, and uh, I've been watching a lot of YouTubes on methods for doing this, and I have tried it in the past, but I don't have a lot of luck with it. Um, I don't seem to be able to get the, the paint to suspend in the water properly. Um, I'm really not sure what I'm doing wrong. But everything that I do, the paint seems to tend to just settle right to the bottom of my water. And the print that I get from it is not very vibrant. Um, they're okay, but they're not really that thrilling. So I tried a whole bunch of them this morning and uh, gave up. Went to clean off my tray that I was using. And this is why I was using a, like a cafeteria style tray. And I was cleaning it off. And all of the paint that I had dropped on into the water had all sort of um, stuck to the bottom of this tray and when I tipped the tray up like this in my sink to try and clean it out it all ran sort of together and swirled about and I thought geez that's really a neat pattern so I grabbed a piece of cardstock dipped it into it and I got a really nice uh, marbleized effect on the paper and I thought well this might be interesting. Maybe I could do something like that without having to use the water bath idea. And the water bath idea is where you fill the tray with water and then you drop your colors onto it. Um, so I thought maybe I'll just use the tray itself as my palette, just mist it with a little water and see what I get. So that's what I'm gonna show you. But before I do that, I'll show you some of the papers that I made. So these are all ones that I did using the technique I'm about to show you. And uh, you can see this one's got a lot of texture to it because uh, what I did was I blotted it with a, a paper towel and I did one with a baby wipe as well. So if the paint gets on here a little too thick, then you can just blot it and you'll get this texture. And here's another one. This one I didn't blot. Um, now the more paint that's on it, the longer it's going to take to dry. Now I did let these sit for about an hour and they were still wet. And uh, so I did dry them with my heat gun. So that's one disadvantage of this method. It does take a while to dry, but if you were doing it in a water bath um, as well, your paper's pretty wet at that point. So it takes probably ju about just as long to do it, to dry it. I also tried it on um, some deli paper. Um, didn't work as well as it did on regular cardstock. Sorry for the interruption, but it figures. Just when I'm uh, about to get into this, my telephone rang. Anyways, I was talking about the deli paper, and I didn't think it worked quite as well in the deli paper, although you can see here that um, this still is very usable. The reason I didn't like it so much on the deli paper was that it tended to bead up onto the deli paper, and so I had to dab it a lot with a, a paper towel. However, it still doesn't do a bad effect on here as too. So that has potential. All right, so how did I do this? So you can see here I have a large tray. It's actually a cafeteria tray. Um, this is what I'm going to use sort of as my palette. And I just have some cheap old uh, CraftSmart paints here. Nothing special. I've got a palette knife and I've got um, my mister of water. And uh, the first time I did this, I tried laying down some water first and putting the acrylic into it, but I found that, that made it way too soupy. So what we're going to do is we're just going to take a couple of the colors and we're just going to squeeze them out here on this tray. And you don't need a lot. And I'm really not uh, particularly uh, being choosy about the colors that I'm using. I'm just putting a few on here. Right from the bottle, I'm not diluting these or anything. Okay, now I'm gonna take my mister and I'm just gonna give it a light spray to start with, just enough to see it start moving. And then I'm just taking my palette knife and I'm just sort of swirling it around. Now you don't want to mix the colors too much together because it will turn to mud. But you can see there's a little bit of movement here in the water. And I'm really not going to get a design out of this. Not like you would if you were to marbleize paper or those people who do it well, or know how to do it. You know, they draw the blade through and they get, you know, interesting little patterns and things like this. This isn't really that method. You're really going to just do a schmush here. 
Um, I'm going to give it just another little squirt of water. Now, if you put too much water on it and it starts uh, getting a little too thin, you can just add a little bit more paint to it. Okay, that's all I'm going to do for the moment. Now I'm going to grab a piece of cardstock. And this is just ordinary white cheap cardstock. Lay it in here, take my hand, smooth it around, and then I'm just going to smush it around. I'll take a look, and if I've got any spots that don't have any color, I can just push them in. It's kind of like the Tim Holtz method of using distress inks um, on a craft sheet uh, with tags. So let's see when we get color in. Let me see, I've got a spot missing here. All right. Now I've done that. I'm just going to move the tray out of the way for a second because now I'm going to show you what you can do. Now I could leave it just like that and let it dry like that, but I kind of like to add some texture to it. So I grab a paper towel and just ball it up and then I just dab. And this gives me a little texture. It also helps it to dry a little faster too. And any spots that are white that you didn't get any paint in, you can get a little bit more paint into it. And you just keep doing it until you get the desired effect that you want. So it's simple as that. Now just I'm going to just take this and put it aside to dry. And I'm going to grab my tray again. And I still have paint on here. So what I'm going to do is kind of do what we do with a jelly plate. I'm going to see if I can get a ghost print. So I'm just going to lightly mist it again. I'm not going to do anything more to it. I'm not going to add any paint. I'm just going to take my cardstock and smoosh it about. Same thing. Any areas where uh, I'm not getting some color. I just dip it in again, drag it about. Now, when I do it this way too, you're going to see there's going to be more brown in here because my colors are starting to mix together and they're making mud. But there I picked up some and I've got a little texture with it and I think I'm going to, instead of dabbing this one, there's a little part there I need a little bit more on. I'm having trouble getting that one on there. Okay. A little bit up there. Okay, so I'm just going to leave that to dry just exactly like it is because I like the texture that's showing up on it. Now, you can add more color. You don't really need to clean up between um, colors, even when you switch the colors. You can, uh, if you're like, if you want a pure. Um, but because I did that ghost print, it seems to have picked some of that up a little bit. And, and what I do is with the palette knife, I'm just, you know, pulling some of the colors into each other as opposed to like stirring them up. I think I want to add a little yellow to this. Oops. So I'm just moving the colors around. And maybe add a little green down here. And I think I need a little, let's add a little white. I'm just going to mist it again a little bit. Okay, enough of that. It's pretty quick. 
to do it. And cleanup isn't difficult because you contain most of it right here into the tray. Okay. Now, of course, your paper is going to curl, but it'll straighten out afterwards. Now, actually, that's kind of neat, just like that. I was going to dab it, and I might just a little bit on the side, but this time I'm going to use a baby wipe. So just over here, you see that I get a different texture with the baby wipe than from the paper towel. And you can move a bit of the color around too if you pick up like I'm picking up a little bit of the red to put over here subtle okay so that's all there is to it so what I'll do now is I'll set this aside I'll probably take my heat gun to it dry it it will curl up so if you want to flatten it out, you can just iron it or what I do, which you've heard of me doing before, is I run it through my laminator a couple of times on the highest temperature. That flattens them out very nice. So now you've got backgrounds you can use in your art journaling pages, on cards, whatever. Um, they're fast, they're easy, and a little less uh, mess than using the whole thing of water. Now, you can't get the detail uh, in the shapes and things that people do. Uh, in the marbleizing but if you're looking for like a colorful background this is the way to go so i hope you enjoyed this quick video on a technique that i don't know if i've discovered it i'm sure other people have tried this before in other ways but it was an, an um, it was a fortunate accident as far as i'm concerned uh today so thanks for watching bye bye